Okay, welcome to Ministry Hacks. Uh, what we're gonna do is talk about my books of the year. Now, these are the books that I have found to be the most helpful. Some of these books are not necessarily gonna be the greatest books. They're the books that, it's, it's a very subjective thing. These are the books that I have found really, really helpful. Uh, but I recommend most of them to you to read and or to listen to. There's some podcasts and courses in there as well. Um, so here we go. Uh, we've also got some different categories and I'd like to say each category only has one book, but I kind of cheated this year because there were so many books I managed to get through with lockdown. So here we have the 2021 Books of the Year. All right, I've got some honorable mentions as well. We've got, um, well, this one, don't let the enemy have a seat at your table. This isn't really gonna win any awards in terms of literature or in terms of theology, but it was just one of those books that for me just came at the right time. It was something I really needed to hear. Uh, a bunch of talks by Louis Giglio. Now, this is in fact the DVD and I went through this with my family and they loved it and I thought, hey, you know what? That's good enough for me to get uh, get a rate as a honourable mention. Uh, we've also got uh, The Good Sporting Life with by my friend Steve Liggins. And the reason I love this book is because we don't tend to think about things like sport when it comes to Christians. So this is a great book. There is so much in here and it's an incredible little book. Uh, well, not really little, but it's a really great book, really well written really worth getting your teeth into. Uh, the other one, which apparently I've given away and uh, I'm hoping to get back at some point, is None Like Him by Jen Wilkin. Uh, this is looking at the non-communicable attributes of God, uh, or in less technical terms, why God is God and he is different to us. Uh, I've read some other books like that, but this has been the most accessible one. So None Like Him by Jen Wilkin. And they're my honorable mentions. In the subject of leadership, uh, we have Small Church Essentials by Carl Barters. Now, this is a, a great book because so many books about Christian leadership come from mega churches, from big churches, about how to grow a big church and how to be in charge of a big church. But Carl Barters has a smaller church, uh, a church under 200, and he talks about how do you uh, grow a, or how do you look after a small church? And he makes a really important distinction because there's big churches and little churches. And we sometimes assume that big church is good, little church is bad. And he's going, actually, it's about good churches and healthy churches and unhealthy churches. And you can have a big church that's unhealthy and you can have a little church that's healthy. That's what's really important is having a healthy church. So small church essentials, Carl Barters. In the category of preaching, uh, I try and set myself the task of reading at least one book on preaching a year. Uh, and I've got two things I wanted to raise uh, this year. The first is Why Johnny Can't Preach uh, by T. David Gordon. Uh, this has been recommended for a little while and it's a little bit of an older book, but I still recommend it. Um, T. David Gordon was, uh, he, he admits that he was at stage three cancer when he wrote this. So he's kind of writing with the tone of, I don't really care what you really think. I'm gonna tell you what you really wanna know in terms of preaching or what you ought to know in terms of preaching. Uh, it's a wonderful book, so he basically uh, has a go at preachers and tells them, you know what, you're not as good as you think you are. Uh, let, me, let me sum it up. He says, to preach the word of God well, one must have cultivated at minimum three sensibilities. The sensibility of close reading of text, the sensibility of composed communication, and the sensibility of the significant. And he's saying that's really what's missing, uh, missing in preaching. Uh, so, why Johnny can't preach? The other one that I, um, I really enjoyed, uh, my, my family subscribed me to a thing called masterclass.com, a whole bunch of different courses. Uh, one of the big surprises, I wasn't expecting this, but I started it and thought, oh, I'll just wonder what it's like, but uh, The Art of Persuasion by Daniel Pink. Uh, this was a wonderful course on, uh, and he's a sort of a New York salesman, so I was expecting the hard sell, but he actually kind of steps back and says, actually getting the data right, doing your homework right, asking the right questions, and, and taking people along with you on a journey was really, really great. And it's really, it's not Christian, but it was really, really helpful, in, just in terms of persuasion, because that's what preaching is, it's persuasion. So there we go, the category of preaching.
In the category of podcasts, uh, this is a little controversial because this is The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill by Mike Cosper. Uh, it is, look, it's, it's, for me, this was actually a really big and important podcast. Uh, I, I actually had a lot to do, well, I was listening to a lot of Mars Hill when it was around, and uh, it was really helpful for me to hear some of the behind the scenes things. But it's my, my only concern about this podcast is I'm just wondering whether the podcast is going to be as controversial as the ministry itself and whether the podcast uh, seeking to be helpful uh, and to bring healing, whether the format of a podcast was really the best way of doing that. Book of the Year. Well, actually, I've got two books of the year and they work together really, really well. Uh, if there was one book of the year, it would have been The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self by Carl Truman. Uh, this is an outstanding book and it looks at the history of how is it that we've come uh, to, in, our, in my grandfather's generation, uh, if I had have said, I'm a, a woman, trapped in a man's body, uh, I think people would have not taken me very seriously, whereas today it is celebrated and applauded. So how do we get there? Uh, that's what Truman looks at, and it's a historical and a philosophical an analysis of that. It's not an easy read, and it's not a quick read, but it is certainly worth it. The good news is I understand that uh, Truman's planning to bring out a teenage accessible version of it uh, later next year. So um, because teenagers really do need to get their head around how, what is the modern self and how do we get there? Uh, combined with this is Being the Bad Guys by Steve McAlpine. Now, one of the downsides of Truman's book is that he he doesn't really give us, uh, he gives us one chapter on how does the church respond to these cultural shifts. Um, Steve McAlpine, his book is all about that. It's all about how do we, particularly as Australian Christians, respond to cultural shifts like this. Um, McAlpine, what I really loved about this is that he, he looked at how do churches respond, but he also talked about how do Christians who live in the workplace respond. So he didn't just assume that Christians just live their whole lives in church and that's it, but how do you respond if you're in a workplace and you're having to deal with that? So these two books actually work really well together. That's why I've got two books of the year this year, Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self and Being the Bad Guys. Yeah. Yeah, well, there is a sign that says recording. Yes, I know. Sorry, I didn't say that one. Two, yep. three, four, five. Cool. Hi, everyone. Yes, thanks. I'll put that in the, at the end. There. You, you can go now. I'm still rolling. Okay. What? Okay, here we go.